Hello guys, Jagveer Singh back with another video of Mastercam 2022 and in this video I will do something different with Mastercam because we will be doing some wireframe making in 2D and then in further videos I will show you how to work on the machining side of it as well. So let's get started. So first of all you can see that on my screen right now I have Mastercam open in front of me and we will try to make a 2D wireframe so I'm just going to take any random internet source available and just like I'll go on another screen and I've searched that like 2D wireframes from Mastercam practice just for fun and we have a lot of wireframes that we are going to go through and this one is pretty simple to start with so I'm going to take use of this particular and I'm just going to take a snip for this particular tool and I think that's good enough for now so that we can get the reference of what we are going to make today and you can see that I'm just going to use it in order to make the wireframe so now I know that the total length of this particular cylindrical shape you can say or I'm just going to say a rectangle I'm going to make this is how I'm going to possess is going to make a rectangle of 240 just like it says and then start with these slots or whatever the pattern in different ways hmm. okay it says 8 times 15 okay I'm expecting it's in millimeters or in inches. I'm just going to assume that this is in inches. And I'm going to start from there. So, let's make this wireframe. This is how I would personally make it. If you like it, then sure. I mean, you know, everybody have different options. Anchor to center, create surface. I mean, different ways of making it. Anchor to center. I just try to keep it simple so that all the calculations become easier for me for future references. So 240 is the case, and I can see. So here I have the radius which is 30, so I know the diameter is going to be 60. So it's pretty simple, right? So I'm going to keep the height to be 240 I guess I think the height is no the height the height is going to be 60 whereas the width is going to be 240 there we go there we go looks good now we already have a rectangle and now we will make this semicircle or arc or whatever you want to say it of radius 30 and a small diameter in between so there are two ways again you can just make a circle here and trim the excess part of it I'm just going to show you how I would do it this is the point I'm just going to make an arc I'm going to enter the radius to be 30 and I'm going to click OK and I'm just going to go and divide and trim the extra part that I have and that's that's pretty much it I mean and I'm just going to keep the line I could have trimmed it but I need the line to make a smaller circle as well so that's the same thing I'm going to do create another circle this one is the diameter is 30 so basically the radius is 15 so I have another circle as well so now I don't need this line I'm going to delete it I'm almost 50% done with my wireframe already so here we have a chamfer you can see we can use chamfer entities if we want to it says 20 by 45 degrees so I'm going to choose these two lines and distance is going to be 20 that's what the, what it says and by default the angle is always going to be 45 degrees so I don't need to change that that's perfect and then it says 8 times 15 so what I'm assuming is, is 15 distance this way and the 8th uh, 8 is the height of this because this thing should be given because they are just four in number hmm. it's slightly misinterpreting 
uh, or sorry, uh, it's slight of a misinterpretation of the drawing, I guess, because it's not pretty clear that what am I supposed to like the height is missing for sure like what exactly the height of this dimension is but what I am assuming is that the distance from the wall to the in uh, starting of the slot I would say is around is 15 and 8 times 15 doesn't make sense to me because I just have four of them so that's kind of interesting to look for but yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go with the wireframe that I have and see what I can do. So how I will interpret this is as 15 from the wall. So I'm just going to offset the wall. 15 distance, which is right here. And I can do the same thing again and again. This is slightly lengthy procedure. You can also use a linear pattern transform I just want to make the height of this thing sure because I don't have any idea of, of how much the height is I'm going to assume it's 8 but 8 seems too shallow or I think it means 8 times 15 means 15 from here plus the 15 of a height as well I think it's giving me an indication that it's a square rather than a rectangle yeah it, this looks far better and more practical in terms of visualization yeah I mean it does make sense now so now I'm just going to get rid of all the extra lines that I have and the lines that I need I'm just going to keep those and I'm going to trim all the excess lines all these extra lines are gone right here and uh, the first one I don't need it, second one I don't need from the bottom. This and this one goes away. Okay. So almost every alternative line is supposed to be disappearing. Okay. First one and this one. So there should be one more. So I'm going to offset it again. 15. Click OK and I'm going to just uh huh. Break trim. To extend the line, and there we have. We are almost done with the wireframe now. So this one is gone. This one is gone, and now this one will be also gone. Yep. Let me have a look at the picture. So wait a sec. Okay. I think this one will be gone. And this one will be gone as well. Oh, my bad. Yeah, looks better. One, two, three, and one more of the slot, right? Yep. I'm just going to try linear pattern. I generally don't use it, but I just want to have a look of how can I actually make it use. Rectangular pattern, manual pattern, let's see. Target the body pattern. Okay, this is only going to be applied for the solid parts. Let's see if we have something in transform. Definitely, we can use in transform. We can use uh, translate. You can select the entities and click end selection, and then you ca you uh, you have the option to copy, move, or join. I'm just going to use copy, and I'm going to select that. I I know that I have to move. In negative negative 15 but that's going to be from the center to the one edge so I need to go at negative 30 in order to make sure that I have equidistance from the center I'm going to click OK click OK get rid of the wireframe at the bottom there we go yep and it looks like what we are expecting one hum, second hum, third hum, and fourth hum. Yeah, I mean, we have it right. So, there we have it, I guess. So, so that's pretty much it. This is the wireframe that we, we needed to make. And I'm just going to erase all the extra lines. 
and you can see that okay this is what we wanted to make and th this is what we ended up with I cannot see any other detail that we are supposed to make so that's pretty much it for this video in next video I will be showing you how to do the machining on this part assuming it to be an aluminum part so that it makes us easier to choose the tool pass and uh, all the parameters like field rate and spindle speed according to it so see you in next video take care for now and do not forget to subscribe my channel thank you